Good morning. This is a new video. Um, hi, I'm Anders the Viking, and this is actually a video that's related to Viking crafting. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this piece of scrap wire that was the end of a roll in my local Wilco that cost 10 pence into jewellery like this. There we go, and like, go on, focus. I think I'm going to turn the camera around like this. So this is chain line jewelry. <clears throat> All of that comes from simple pieces of copper wire. So you know that me and my wife make our own jewelry. Um, she does it purely as a hobby, but we are looking at turning it into a hobby-esque business at some point. Uh, it all started a few years ago when, uh, after my father passed away, he had a massive shed and there was tons and tons of scrap copper wire, pools, stools and spools of this stuff. And it was all gonna get chucked away and I thought, I can make something with this. So I started stripping it and learning how to make um, chainmail and jump rings. And that's what this video is about. It's, this is the first of two possibly three videos, instructional ones, on how to turn okay, this into this using simple everyday tools. Um, this is not an authentic Viking way of doing things because Vikings didn't really have chain mail as jewellery. Um, they had it more for armour and protection, although recently chain mail has become uh, quite a big thing uh, for jewellery. Um, they would have had pieces like this which is two in two chain mail and um, there's been finds from Finland and similar other places <coughs> where they've been found and copper is often used so this is not authentic but it is inspired by Viking jewellery <coughs> so tools that you will need is I'll take it over you will need gloves Gloves are very, very important to protect these hands, and trust me, you need decent, thick, clever gloves. These are gardening gloves, but they are thick. You will need something arrest, which is a placemat. Um, you will need a mandrel to coil the rings around. This is a drill bit, which has been modified and has a hole cut in it there. You'll need a drill, you need a pair of pliers, and you'll need a knife. And of course, some wire. I also have some more wire here and here, which was given to me a while ago by a friend called James. Um, I haven't got around stripping it, so I'm going to show you how to do it just with this kind of wire, maybe with that for today, and then I'm going to show you how to strip it and coil it. Right. So, like I say, yes, I've used an electric drill for this. You can easily just use a hand roller. There are professional tools that do this, um, called ringinators and. Pepe jump ring motor, but they're hundreds and hundreds of pounds. This is stuff that you have lying about that is relatively cheap and affordable to use. Um, so, right, so I'm going to pause for a second and get myself set up, and then we'll come back to this video. If only I had a useful tool to open the packaging that came in, such as a knife, that would be really useful. This is from Poundland. Poundland, you suck. Why do you not make it easy to open? Thankfully, I have scissors. Ta -da. So it opens. Right. I do have other knives, um, but I haven't got one to hand, and I couldn't be bothered to traipse into the shed this morning. It's cold and rainy in the middle of the night, so we have a blade. Which is fetching. I like blue. Blue's kind of my favourite colour. Right, I'm going to pause again, get set up, back in a second. Okay, so often when you're getting wire like this, um, like I say, all of the stuff that I've used before is recycled wire. I like using recycled jewellery, oh, recycled materials, um, to keep costs down, and because it's good for the environment, and stops resources like this from going into landfill, etc, etc. If you saw my last video, um, where I stripped down a vacuum cleaner to get copper wire from that, Kind of the same deal. If I can prevent certain things from going to landfill, heavy metals and stuff like that, then great. Unfortunately, this comes on plastic, so yeah, the plastic is going to go in the bin, but it's unavoidable. 
what a lot of people do who are quite unscrupulous when it comes to stripping wire is they will get copper wire like this and big tubes like this and set them on fire. So they melt the plastic and it burns and it stinks and it's horrible and it's really, really bad for the environment. So yes, the coating is going in the bin, but at least it's not um, gonna get burnt and pollute the atmosphere in a certain way. So like I say, this cost me a grand total of 10 pence for a piece of wire. Wow, for two meters. Um, out of two meters of wire, this is free core wire. Probably won't be able to see. Um, per meter of wire, I can get 30 jump rings if it's larger coils and about 40 jump rings if it's smaller coils. It's a, a one coil, one chain mail ring. We'll get some spare. Uh, yes. This is aluminium, but the same thing. One chain mail ring like so. Come on, focus, focus, focus. This camera is very slow to focus. Go on, focus, focus, focus. No, it works. All right, so one jump ring like that is about three centimeters. So two meters per meter. So out of this, I should get, so it's three core. This is where I'm embedding mats. Um, so three cores of wire. At two meters will give me 30, 60, 120, 180 jump rings. Now this is different core wire, I think it's 2 mil outside and 1.5 inside. The 1.5 is not so great. I'm sorry about the picture quality on this as well, it's really dark today. Should I put a light on? Let's put a light on. Probably better. Ah, better? Mm, better. Right, so. What I've done is I've straightened this wire, it was all kinked up and stuff like that because you need it relatively flat to use the um, knife to slice it open. I haven't done this in a while so this is, I'm going to be a bit rusty with this but hey, we'll give it a go. This fat is now flattened out. So what we're going to do, I'll bring you down here and hopefully you can see it's okay. So I'm using the cutting mat on my knee like that so when I'm using the knife it's got something to stop it from slicing into me. I have gloves for protection, because they're very important. Sorry that you can't see my head, but you don't really need to, you need to see this. So the first part, before you're actually coiling anything at all, is just stripping the wire out. So once we've got that there, for the purpose of this, I shall only use glove on this hand not in my knife hand because for more flexibility and stuff but in the gripping hand which is where I'm going to be pulling it through knife is important <clears throat> it's probably important to have a glove in on both hands but I need, I need flexibility so first thing to do is just, here, you just make a slice there, strip it now sometimes you're lucky this kind of stuff and you can if it's cheaper wire you can and um, like it is actually gonna go don't go off first don't need them yes so I might bring you a bit further back so you can literally and strip it like this much easier now, because this is free core wire, so we've already got the inside piece of wire exposed, two meters. This is thinner wire. This is not good for the large jump rings that I'm using today. So we'll put this to one side um, because copper is a very soft metal. So there we go. So we've got a bit there and then we have the other stuff. So we'll strip out the outer shell which leaves us with the inner core wire. So newer wire is in two colors. You have blue and you have brown cores. Um, when I started stripping all of the wire that was given to me by my mom, which was my dad's, it was all old wire and that was, used to have a red core and it's red or white or red or blue. And it was standardized a few years ago. So you can't use those color wires anymore. I don't know why they changed the colour of them, they did. So we've got two colours. Let it zoom in like so. 
So now we've got that, it's just going to be a matter of stripping that down. This will be quite quick to do. And if you can get a nice flow with it, then brilliant. So I'll bring it back to here again. So you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. So again, cutting that, not slight fingers. <clears throat> to start it off, and to start it off, all I do is just literally get a nick on the end of that. Like so. And that exposes the core. So again, sometimes with stuff like this, you can kind of pull it off, but this wire is just going to break. So we've got a core exposed. So then what we need to do is, well, um, to be safe, because I'm sure if people watch this, I'll say, Andy, wear gloves. It's, these gloves are quite stiff. They've been in the garage for quite a while. Just, no, sorry, can't do it. You want to be careful not to nick the wire. Can I do a bit to here? Yes. You want to be careful not to nick the wire. Well, in itself, because that will blunt the blade. And then, there we go. Da -da -da -da. And this is why straightening your wire beforehand is really useful. So I've lost it now. It's a trick to get him the right angle. Always pull the blade away from yourself, never toward yourself, because if you slip, if you slip and go that way, at least you're just going onto the cutting board. Safety first. And I know this is probably not the safest way of doing things. And two. So now we have, if you can see, stripped away the inside of it, possibly not. So now, fetched one little piece off of it, let's zoom out, and then all we have to do is find a loose point on it, like so, and move you back again, and this is the fun bit, get the two pieces, oh, 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 oh. that was a bit that snout, so put it through, da, 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 da. easy. And then we have one piece of wire, right? So I'll do that again quickly with the other piece. Then. And then I'll show you how to pull this into trim. So again, first part of it, just nick it, strip it off so you've got an edge to start with. You usually go for a couple of centimetres. Again, always, always using the knife to go away from yourself. And that's exposed the wire inside. Shall we see if we can pull it on this one? No, see, won't do it. So, again, use that, like that. If your wire is as straight as possible, it's much, much easier to be able to control it. And then we just go. If you're not making chain mail jewellery and you're scrapping wire because copper is worth money and I mean this cost me 10p for all this wire it's probably worth I don't know the raw rate of copper these days maybe I can wait at some point um, but copper is worth scrap um, quite well. so if you are scrapping this is an easy way of getting to what's called bare bright copper which is what this is <coughs> and you can take it to your local scrap merchant and scrap it and make money back off it <coughs> but I think it's far more rewarding to strip wire like this and turn it into art and there we go easy as that done so now we have wire right so we have now got two pieces of wire two meters long stripped and ready to coil. So I'm going to pause for a minute, clean up all the mess, because there is quite a lot of mess wire everywhere. So we'll clear all that, throw it all in, um, and then I'll show you how to coil. All right, so I'm going to pause, be right back. A drill, you need a new to one side in a second. So what you need to do is 
it's a really decent one. Um, so yeah, so, like so you want your drill also through the hole. I'll leave it there for a second. Yes, there are better tools to do it with, but for the purpose of that, hopefully. And once it's like that, and drill, and drill. It is as close to where we put it in as possible. Two meters. 70 cut rings on there. Um, you know, the next one. So everyone has done. Wrap it the other way and get attention right again. Literally just try and separate. It. Make a quite simple bracelet or something. And that can be turned into things like that. Or more elaborate. Yeah, I'm going to get this like this. Get all three in the shop. There it is. It's on how to cut these. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a lovely Sunday. Me again. <clears throat> One last thing. If you're a paranoid and think that Facebook is watching you and stalking you and listening in on your conversations, I've just been onto Facebook after recording this video and lo and behold, but what shows up but a sponsored advert for drill bits and drills and wire strippers and more drills. Go on Facebook, tell me that's not a coincidence, because I've literally just filmed this video. Yeah, interesting, because I've not had this conversation with anyone on Facebook recently, or anything like that, but there you go. Not that I'm paranoid and think that everybody's out to get me. Prove me that I'm wrong, Facebook. <laughs>